Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Historic Challenges and today we're here for the second episode of the Great Rivalries. Now we're in 2003, Gibnau, King of France. Valentino Rossi has had to compete with Spanish riders for much of his MotoGP career. The first in the series was Sete Gibnau, who was his best in the two-year period between 2003 and 2004 on a Honda. His specialty was a dazzling start to the season and the track where he did the best was Le Mans. At the 2003 French GP, the duel with Rossi is set after a red flag for rain. In the last seven laps, Sete and Valentino continuously pass each other. A dramatic last lap with two passes each, the last move comes from Gibbonau who triumphs by only 165 thousandths of a second. So then what we've got to do, we've got to beat, well we've got to pass Rossi and then beat him by 4.5 seconds. Here we are, we're on the track. So obviously it's wet like it was then, but it's a bit wetter than it was. By the end it was almost dry. So then a 148.2 by Rossi then apparently on that lap we've got to watch out because I know they break very early for turn one around the outside we go of Valentino have we got the move done yes we have but will he be able to cut back underneath us because we have gone in a bit wide although it's not the 120 AI is it so so as I can bear that in mind I can run a little bit wide if I'm making a bit of a dive they won't be able to cut back underneath six tenth lead already we've got to get four and a half seconds so we've got to get a move on I'm assuming he'll be very slow at the uh, latter half of the lap. Into Museum. Oh, we've ran really wide through Museum. Obviously, it's the wet as well, so we've got to bear that in mind. The AI are slightly better in the wet, I think, maybe. Although, I haven't done a massive amount of wet running. 2.7 seconds we've got. So, we've got 1.8 to make up. And then that's it. Should be able to do that. With the time we've got left. So we go down towards the chicane. Breaking. Actually, a bit late for the chicane. Although, actually, not too bad. I guess it's because we had less speed coming onto the straight. So, we didn't go too wide by breaking a little bit later than I should have done. Right, 4.3. So, we just got to get well, just over a tenth more. Through turn 12, then. This is the corner where Rossi went for the dive and ran off the track. We've ran a bit off the track as well. But through the last corner then, we've got a massive lead over him. He's not even got into the penultimate turn yet. There we go, over the line. What is the gap going to have been? I think we've easily aced that challenge. Yes, yeah, so we absolutely destroyed it. We did it by 9.1, 9.81 seconds. And we unlocked Jibben out and the 2003 Movie Star team. And we also unlocked another sticker. Yeah, the AI always lose a lot more time once you've gone over the line, so the gap's always a lot bigger than you think it's going to be. But anyway, we'll head back to the historical challenges menu. We'll look at the second challenge. So then, we move on to 2004 now. Valentino's ninth gem. The final race of the 2004 MotoGP season promises to be hard fought. The top 13 in qualifying are within less than a second of each other. The 122,000 spectators in the stands have plenty to enjoy because Makoto Tomada immediately goes for a breakaway. After two laps, he's already at a one-second margin. Although third in practice, Valentino starts badly, standing sixth at the end of the first lap. But then, with his trademark sneakiness, he passes his rivals, including Biaggi, taking the lead. Despite there being 15 laps to go, he's going to win the race, which makes 9 GPs won on his debut with Yamaha. Incredible. So then we've got to pass Biaggi and win by 4.2 seconds. So actually a little bit behind Biaggi here. So we actually got to catch him and pass and then pull out 4.2 in the lap at Valencia as well, which is a track I'm not particularly great at. Although I have done a race here now, in a league race, so I am a little bit better. We've got the Galwa sponsorship. So a 1 minute 40.5 there by Biaggi. Got to try not to pick up a penalty. You can easily pick up a penalty at that turn 1 in the pit lane exit. Closing up to him. We'll be able to close right up to him through the Doohan corner. Yeah, through Mick Doohan. Will we have a look into his left hander? No, but we'll be able to go around the outside through turn three, break for turn four, and we're in front of him. So now we're ahead, we've got we've got to try and pull out 4.2 seconds. Shouldn't be too difficult because the Yamaha does work quite well really at this track. The Henny bike is very hard to defend from his Ducati just because of how much straight line speed it's got. As uh, as you'll know if you've seen my uh, RR Racing League video at this track. If you haven't, then I do reckon you go check it out. It's fantastic racing with a lot of Ducatis. Me on a Yamaha it was a very close finish at the end as well. So if you haven't seen that, I do recommend you go check that out. 
into turn 11. Out of turn 11. What is the gap? 4.6. So we've actually done it already. So actually it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Through turn 13. All the race trying to step out there. As we go towards Adrian Campos. Can I actually keep it on the track? Adrian Campos. Yes we can. Out of Adrian Campos we go now. Then up towards the line. I'm going to have destroyed Biaggi in this challenge. Pretty easy in the end. I thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than it was. So then, what do we unlock? We unlock Rossi 2004. We unlock the 2004 Yamaha team. And we unlock a Spider, apparently. So uh, we'll head back to the historical challenges menu. And we'll have a look at the third challenge. 2007. Stoner beats Rossi in his rival's kingdom. With eight victories from 1997 to 2006, the Barcelona track is Valentino Rossi's kingdom. But in 2007, he finds an extraordinary Casey Stoner in his way. The Australian rider arrives in Catalonia first in the rankings and is determined to increase his lead. Danny Pedrosa takes the lead at the start, but on lap 2 he's overtaken by Stoner. Valentino is brought back into it and a head-to-head -head starts on lap 11. In 14 laps they pass each other 14 times, sometimes at impossible spots. The Ducati rider pulls off a masterpiece on the third last lap and then closes the trajectories until the finish. What a sight. We've got to resist Valentino Rossi and Pedrosa's attacks and then win by 3.8 seconds, so we've just got to pull out a gap of 3.8. The ones where you're ahead are always the easiest ones because you don't even have to uh, catch anybody, you just have to pull out the gap they give you. But we are on to an 800 now, so we've got to bear that in mind that the uh, tricky 800s, I did find them quite tricky when we played them before. We're back on one now. Got to watch out for them, so 154.1 then. Set on that lap apparently. Got to watch out the tyres are very cold as well. The bike is shaking into turn one. Although sometimes you have a bit of faith, you can still sort of make it to the apex. Oh, I forgot. Oh, wow, okay. I forgot about how bad the lack of anti-wheelie was. Right, so let's hope this time it's not quite as embarrassing. We don't <laughs> we do not do a massive wheelie out the first corner and then crash into the second one. Well, that was... I mean, it was still an appalling corner, but at least it didn't crash this time. So we've got one second already. we got to get another 2.8 out then. Sliding it through turn three. I don't think we'll be on the 800s for too long. Uh, we might be on it again for the last challenge, for a guess, but... The 800s are definitely the hardest bikes to ride in this game, at least in my opinion. Uh, I thought it was... I thought the 500s and the 990s were difficult when I played through them the first time, but compared to the 800s, they are easy. The 800s, just with the lack of anti-wheelie and the amount of power they've got, it's so obviously you haven't got any riding aids with the 500s, but they're nowhere near as powerful as the these 800s are, so they don't wheelie nearly as much. The, the actual difficulty with the 500s I found was the uh, was the lack of engine braking, because you ran really wide. i got to remember to not take the inside line. <laughs> yeah, go the uh, old way around the corner. We got 4.1, so we are safe. The other day I was playing online and I uh, didn't see that Catalonia Classic had been picked, so I thought it was the normal Catalonia, so I just turned in and then realised everybody else was going around the other one, looked at the map and realised I'd gone through the wrong corner. There's no indication of um, which one it is, so if you don't catch which one won the vote, you just see Catalonia, you just assume it's uh, a normal Catalonia race. But anyway, out the last corner, up towards the line, we're going to have, well, easily done this challenge, 142.7 sets on that last lap as well. How far were we in front of Rossi at the end? 6.6 .6 seconds, so an easy win there. This one we unlock Casey Stone in 2007, the 2007 Ducati team, and, and uh, well, don't really know what you know, expression that is, just a bit of a meh emoji. So we'll head back to the historical challenges menu now, and we'll have a look at the fourth challenge of the episode. Well, the final one, really, but it is the fourth one. So we're moving on to 2009 now, and once again we're at Catalonia. Valentino on the last corner of the last lap. Barcelona 2009, just a place and data enough. All Valentino Rossi fans remember the joy of that day like it was yesterday. On the eve of the Catalonia GP, the ranking reads Stoner 90, Lorenzo 86 and Rossi 81. The three of them immediately go for it on the ninth lap and the Ducati rider drops off. The two Yamahas compete for victory, locked together during the laps with a minimum 34 thousandths of a second to a maximum 474 thousandths of a second gap. Rossi is leading at the beginning of the last lap, but Lorenzo overtakes him on the first corner. Jorge remains first until the last bend, where Valentino overtakes his bike by 35 centimetres at 180 kilometres an hour. What a feat. So then we've got to pull out 4.4 seconds at Catalonia. I must say it's interesting that it's the same track, still an 800, so very similar. 
yet we have to pull out a bigger gap and we have you know we have we've also got to pass him actually it might yeah well it's a similar gap anyway so 54 6 there for Lorenzo on that lap Let's go towards the first corner oh the bike's not happy the bike's not happy the bike's not happy I've picked up a penalty apparently as well so we're gonna pull out another half a second on him I thought I'd retry it uh, the first corner not particularly being our friend today that's for sure Especially with uh, cold tyres, Turn 1 is not a nice one on these bikes. And we're close up to Lorenzo, not the inside, it's a Turn 3. That was a very close manoeuvre, but we've got it done. So we're now into the lead of the race. We've got to pull out 4.4 seconds, so I've got to get a move on. If we go into Turn 4, we've gone in a bit hot, got a trail break on the front to get it stopped. Nice, that's just something you have to do. Turn 4 is one of those corners that can really suck you in. Turn 5, again, is uh, likewise quite similar. You can easily overshoot it, but I find Turn 4 is uh, slightly worse for that. And you fire it out, Turn 5, there's a little kink in the straight, Turn 6, and then get hard on the brakes for Turn 7 once again, and then you get launched at the hill. So we've got 2.7 seconds already ahead of Lorenzo, flicking the bike over through 8. So we've got the hill towards Turn 9, not too bad of a corner. And then you, f you just got to maximise your exit then, because you carry that speed all the way down the straight towards Turn 10. We've got to remember... Uh, oh, 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 what's happened? Okay, that was a weird crash. Really weird. And. Well, we're now behind Lorenzo again. We actually had almost done it. That's uh, a bit unfortunate, really, isn't it? I'm trying to see if I can still do it. I think we might actually be able to, you know. Oh, no, we only had three seconds. So with a crash, wasn't enough, so I'll do that one again into the last corner then. I think we'll have successfully done it this time. We didn't crash, so we almost did it last time even with the crash. So let's have a look. Up towards the line. 142.0 set there. What is that going to be in front of Lorenzo? 7.2 seconds, so easily done. And of course it's a feather. Of course it is. But we have now got gold in that challenge. I hope you have enjoyed this video. That's obviously the last challenge. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Hope you're all staying safe. And I shall see you in the next one.